Okay, good. Let's pray. <clears throat> Thank you, Father, that you're awesome, God, Lord. And what you have for us, Lord, is beyond what we can ask or think or imagine, Lord, because you are such a good Father. Holy Spirit, I acknowledge you right now as the greatest teacher and revealer of truth. I ask that you think through my mind and speak through my mouth. And let your words go forth, not in my own human wisdom, but in demonstration of your spirit and power, that the faith of your people will rest in you and your power. In Jesus' name, amen. Supernatural immediate arrival. Supernatural immediate arrival. Everything about our God is not natural. And because we are born from him, you, we are also not natural, <laughs> right? You take after your father, right? Your genes, okay? We have a new genes, J-E-G-E-N-E-S, not J-E-A-N-E-S, <laughs> okay? So our whole being, all right, is no longer, we're no longer meant to be natural. We're born from him, remember? We call him father. Okay, God is supernatural, miraculous, powerful, the greatest one. And he lives inside us. The same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives inside you and me. How can we live a normal, natural life doing this wonderful truth? Immediate arrival. You don't know, have you all traveled before? <laughs> you need some time, right? In the natural. Okay, today we're not talking about natural, but what from the supernatural, if you can catch it, and I trust the Holy Spirit will help every one of us to catch it because only He, we acknowledge Him as who He is, right? When we acknowledge whoever as who they are, you receive from them from that position of who they are. When we acknowledge Holy Spirit as the Spirit of God, as the greatest teacher and revealer of truth, He comes in, just like one of the songs we sang also. He came, He comes immediately when we say, Holy Spirit, move. He comes in because we acknowledge Him. It's the same when we receive Jesus, we're acknowledging Jesus Christ as the Lord of our lives. And He comes in. If we, we acknowledge him as Lord, if we acknowledge him only as Savior, just Savior. <laughs> okay, that's why Lord and Savior are two things, two different words. Words have meaning. Okay, so why God used the word grace, faith, God love? Because each one has a meaning by itself. Okay, so immediate arrival. In the natural, you want to come to Malaysia, those of you who are from Singapore, you need to take a flight. And there need to be a, a time, a, a space of time, right? I think it's uh, about one hour before you can arrive at Kuala Lumpur International Airport. And some of you are coming for the next Holy Spirit power feast, which is drawing very near. And things are happening very fast. What are things? Powerful things in the realm of the spirit. Yeah, don't miss it. But it takes some time in the natural to arrive here. Okay? So what we are talking today is supernatural immediate. Because in the spirit, remember, we are spirit, soul, and body. Okay? So today, the Holy Spirit will show us again. First, the spirit. Okay? First, if we can receive and understand God from the spirit. Holy Spirit communicate with our spirit, not with our body, not even with our mind. Okay, whatever he speak to us, Jesus said, my words are spirit and are life. Those who worship him, worship him in spirit and in truth. So what does this mean? Let's go into the word. 
because only the Holy Spirit can give us this revelation and understanding of the supernatural immediate arrival. Okay, John, so we're going into the miracles of Jesus when he was on this earth. Yeah, because our God is a miracle working God. It's sad when people don't see Jesus or see Christianity, you know, as a, just another religion. But they need to see God, see Jesus as for who he is. If you see him as who he is, then he will manifest in your life. If you see God, Abba, as Abba, he manifests in your life, taking care of all of your needs, like Evelyn Gosher, as well as Robert Lowe, right? Whatever is needed, right, he provides because he's our daddy God. And Jesus said, I come to reveal to you the Father. So when we call him Father, it means not just a name, right? But in reality, Jesus is very real, all right? God is so real. That's why we are seated here this morning in heavenly places around his throne. So when we say, when we have Jesus, he's, he's not happy to just sit there and do nothing <laughs> for us. Can you imagine? You have the resources right beside you, the source of all supply and all miracles living inside you, the very person who can give you what the world cannot give who can peace, who can do what the world cannot do or what in your own strength cannot do. And we just let him pass by. <laughs> no, okay. All right, so the miracle working God. When our eyes begin to turn back to Jesus as the one, as the God who is the same yesterday, today and forever, to see our God, right? As the Jehovah God of the Jews who did all the miracles, Right from in the Old Testament and to Christ in Christ in the New, through the apostles in the book of Acts. This is who our God is today. This is who our Holy Spirit wants to reveal to us, every one of us here, whom He has brought to this ministry. It's not an ordinary meeting or ministry, it is supernatural because Holy Spirit is here. God is here. So, John chapter 6, the next miracle Jesus did. So, they gathered them up. Okay, there was a miracle of, uh, they have went, gone through a few, which is the water turned into wine, the first miracle that Jesus did, the healing of the uh, official son. And then we had uh, the uh, deliverance. Okay. Then there was Miracle before this one, this, this miracle is the five uh, loaves and the two fishes, but I'm not going to go into that one for this morning. So they gathered them up and they filled 12 large baskets with pieces from the five barley loaves, which were left over by those who had eaten. When people saw the sign attesting miracle that he had done, they began saying, this is without doubt a promised prophet who is come to the world. So to the people, they saw Jesus as the promised prophet, all right, because of the miracles. So here he just finished the miracle of uh, multiplying the uh, five loaves and two fishes to feed 5,000 plus, almost plus women and children, almost 15,000 people just with a boy's lunch. <clears throat> then Jesus knowing that they were going to come and take him by force to make him king, withdrew again to the mountainside by himself. Now, this is something that we need to follow, Jesus' way of doing miracles. <laughs> because when you begin, you know, the miracles that Jesus did, we will do also and greater because they have gone to the Father. Uh, oh, the Holy Spirit uh, is now in us. So it's not about just miracles, all right? The power and all that people want, okay, but the whole uh, life that we live here on this earth is a full life to be like him, right? We all want to be like him, right? To grow mature just like Jesus in every area, right? There is a, the gifts of the spirit and there is the, the fruits of the spirit, right? Both are equally important. Okay, the fruits is what? The love, 
the patience, the goodness, the kindness, all right? <clears throat> Our character is very much important as well as the, the, the gifts, which is the power manifested supernatural healings and miracles and provision in our life. So when Jesus did miracles, the people always want to come to him and make him king <laughs> by force. He knew. I love this about Jesus. He knows everything. And if you are his prophet, you are his servant, you have the Holy Spirit who knows all things, Jesus who knows all things with you. So that's why the best person to serve is our Lord. <laughs> Nobody can lie to you. <laughs> Nobody can trick you, right? Because you have Holy Spirit always there, where needed, where necessary, right? That is, you know, ahead what is going to happen. So Jesus knew ahead. After a miracle, they want to make him king. But what did he do? You see the humility of our Lord. How not to love this wonderful Savior. He's very different from the devil. The devil wants always to exalt himself. Right? From the pride of man. But he is so humble. After doing a miracle of provision, remember? All the earlier miracles that we went through. Right? He all, even the one, the mercy from the Bethesda in the temple, he dis, again disappeared. You know, he always disappeared. It was his mercy to just, for this person who suffered 38 years in that condition, he just went to heal him. And before anyone knows it, he's gone, disappeared. Right? This is our Lord. Where we know that it is when we do miracles through his power in us, he gave us that power. What? There is nothing to boast. There is people want to make you king and great disappear. <laughs> okay. Quickly disappear. All right. Because we cannot take the glory that belongs to God. All right. I always, I think I shared this uh, in one of my uh, sermons of preaching and when I'm doing the ministry in. Uh, Philippines uh, years and years ago because there's so many people and then I remember so clearly because it shocked me you know when I was praying for some a lady uh, and I don't know what God did to her it must be some miracle or she felt touched or something and then before me she's in front of everyone she suddenly knelt down <laughs> because they're mostly Catholic I think so she knelt before me you know uh, and then she kneeled down and gave me a shock, you know, like she saw me as a as a day as a god like that, and it really shocked me. And immediately, I quickly just knelt down to her, you know, and prayed for her because I, I there was you know it just cannot take that kind of worship, you know, that kind of. Uh, uh, yeah, the people seeing you as God after you do things that are supernatural through him. They don't know, all right? So whatever, they're, they're, all of you are going to be so empowered right, by the Holy Spirit that miracles are going to happen through your hands, all right? As you go to Cambodia, even wherever you are, all right? More and more, because this is what God wants to do. Okay, but be careful. All right, just remember, yeah, it is not us who do those miracles. It is not us who save those souls. Yes, God used us, but it is him and never take his glory, just Jesus. Yeah, he, he, it is him who is doing it. Amen. Tell the people always, I love all those healing crusades, you know, where the ministers, the preachers that God used mightily through them, and brought healing, divine, supernatural healing to many people, right? When the people want to come and worship you as a God, they tell them, thank Jesus, thank Jesus, right? Jesus withdrew to the mountainside, yeah? He doesn't want to be made king by the people. Why? Because he knows he's already king. 
<laughs> he is the king of kings. He don't need man to make him, to exalt him. Right? And the thief has one purpose, to come to this planet, to this earth, that is to save us from our sin, to heal us, to bless us. Right? He is already king. Know your position in Christ. You don't need anyone on this earth to make you great. God makes us great. God makes us rich. God is the one, our God. And he says we are small case, kings and priests in Christ Jesus. One day we will reign over cities. Okay? All right. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea. All right, so now I'm going to uh, train you, all of you, right, to love reading the Bible. <laughs> okay, I'll try to put as little pictures as possible. <laughs> okay, if you, you need to see pictures, go to Spark Jewels, <laughs> okay, for the children. But we were all built with the capacity inside us to imagine, okay? And words are God's way of speaking to us. All right, pictures in our mind will be formed as we hear the word of God. Okay, so everyone has it. It's not about your intelligence, your PhD or what. No, every person created by God has a spirit, a soul, a body. And inside this soul is the mind. Okay, where you are built, built in is your imagination part. Okay, where we can create pictures. The Holy is true words. You first listen to a word, then only you see the picture, right? Okay, a describe it. A Ferrari, then only you see the Ferrari inside your head. If I don't say Ferrari, you won't be having the picture of Ferrari, right? So many, the, 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 the devil trick a lot of people, don't read the Bible. <laughs> Go read other books and this and all that, right? Because they said the Bible got no pictures. <laughs> It's full of pictures, okay? The Bible is full of the wonderful pictures, the glory of God, right? But it takes the Holy Spirit to bring those pictures to us in our imagination, right? That's why in uh, Genesis, right, there were evil imagination. They imagined the Tower of Babel. Did nobody draw the picture for them? Today, we have architect, right? To, to build the twin tower and whatever tower. During that time, <laughs> what happened? Every thought, conception of every thought, picture was formed in their imagination. That was how powerful God created man. But they were evil. Because of sin, they imagined evil things. And they imagined a big tower to reach heaven, to reach God, that they can reach God. What a ridiculous thing. No man in their sin can no longer reach God. Right? Those of us in the, I teach you in the worship training. Right? God is so holy, so powerful. You just touch a little bit. <laughs> Even the, the covering of where his presence is, the ark, and poof, die. Yeah, these silly people because of evil, sin. Yeah, but they had the imagination, the soul area that is still so powerful, spirit died. Okay, and they wanted, they thought they have their own way to get to heaven. And God just came and he did what only God can do. <laughs> right? <laughs> or what did God do? Change all their language confuse them. They can no longer be one. So today the world devil is still trying to do the same thing. Cause every religion to think that all their gods are the same. And when they come and become one body, one heart, one mind, they will do exactly what the people in the Tower of Babel that time did. Their imagination right, led by the devil. But today, because of Jesus Christ, we already know the tricks. So if you go to the word of God yourself, 
which the devil said, don't touch, don't touch. It's very hard to understand. No pictures there. <laughs> if you need pictures, buy a children's Bible. <laughs> okay, but go to the word of God. To the word of God. Because God wants to speak to us and bring us right closer to him. Not just fulfilling uh, good. It's not the, the boyfriend-girlfriend type of relationship. It's much more than that. He speaks to you. If you can hear him, one word of his word from the Bible, miracle happen. Your life will never be the same again. God spoke to me. That is what you need to hear. All right? God spoke to you. God speaks to you, not through someone else. Yeah, that person, the preacher or whoever it is can guide you. But your direct relationship is God spoke to me, but it must be from the word. Anything weird outside the word, <laughs> be careful, okay? Because God gave us the Bible, no addition, no subtraction, <laughs> right? That's it. From Genesis, right, day of Adam and Eve until rapture, second coming, there is not going to be a revised Bible, <laughs> a revised version God, but no new Bible. That is the word of God. Get into the word of God today because of what God is doing, all right, in you and through you and in us here as Beauty for Ashes. Together, God is going to do something so powerful and know that God is here. People will know and they will come to Jesus, come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ before that horrible day. Good for us, the rapture, but not good for those who are left behind. When evening came, the disciples went down, his disciples went down to the sea. So see that, right? The Holy Spirit is now Opening up your imagination, okay? We are at the sea. <laughs> okay? We all of you, have you seen a sea before? No, no. Yeah. Singapore is an island, right? Yeah, <laughs> surrounded by sea. Okay? And Malaysia, we have sea all over. The, we love to go to the seaside. <laughs> okay, so sea, that is it's evening, it's dark. All right, getting dark, evening. No more the sun that we just saw, right? Towards evening and the disciples were there. They got into a boat. Okay? Can you see a boat? <laughs> okay, you don't need to be an artist to see a boat, right? <laughs> Every one of you know what a boat is. Okay? So you go inside a boat. A boat is supposed to be to travel on the water, which we cannot walk on. Already, between us drowning human being and the sea, right? It's the boat. The boat carries you. That's why we have, in a sense, Noah's Ark as the Ark, right? Place of safety. Okay, Noah get got into the Ark. God told him to build. Actually, it's a boat, right? Noah's Ark is a boat, okay? And there, inside the boat, he's saved from the judgment of God to come on those uh, evil people, okay? So, there was they got into this boat, the disciples, okay, and started to cross the sea to Capernaum. All right, so there was a sea. They want to go across to Capernaum. So for Malaysia, we like to go to uh, where? Pankor. <laughs> okay, or uh, Penang, you know, an island. So from the mainland, we want to go to another island, right? There's a certain distance and we need to take a boat. To go over across the sea. So this is what the disciples, without Jesus, okay, the disciples were going, got into this boat and then they know where they are going. <laughs> okay, they want to go to Capernaum, which is across the sea, dividing them from Capernaum, and they were inside a boat. Anyone cannot imagine this? <laughs> then we ask uh, Elsa to draw it for you. <laughs> <laughs> and put in the slide, okay? But I believe you all can, all right? It was dark and Jesus had still not come back to them. All right? So getting dark, Jesus is not there. 
Remember, he went to the mountainside <laughs> to be by himself. Okay, Capernaum. So where were they going? Capernaum. Capernaum is is the meaning is a, a called village of comfort. It's a flourishing city, all right, of Galilee, situated on the western shore of the Sea of Galilee, near the place where the Jordan flows into the lake. So where were they going? To the village of comfort. You like to be comfort? Of course, right? Nothing wrong. Eh? <laughs> Don't feel guilty if you are comfortable, okay? Because Jesus came to give us blessings, comfort, everything. But not to stay there forever. <laughs> because we got work to do. Okay, when you are tired, you need to rest after your work, all right? Then you sit down on a chair comfortably, but you don't sit there for the next 10 years, right? <laughs> ah, you will get up and go back to work. If not, your wife will say, hello, lady bone, just get up <laughs> and go to work. You can rest there for uh, six hours, get up and do your work. So we are here. God wants us to take our rest, all right? Comfortable when we are in peace, at rest. And he also gives us all the blessings, all right? Nice place to rest in. This is all God wants us to have. And then when we are rested, go and do the work, <laughs> which is serve the Lord, go preach the gospel, okay? So the village of comfort is where the disciples were crossing the sea in a boat to get to. And the sea was getting rough and rising high. So to travel from where they were to the village of comfort, Capernaum, all right, they had to cross this sea. The sea, this pool getting rough, got waves, got troubles, you know, rising high. The life that we are going through, the journey that we go through, all right, in this sea. In the world, the, the, the sea always talk about people, all right, in the world. That's why we go catch fish <laughs> in the sea, not in your aquarium <laughs> at home, okay? They say, Pastor, I caught fish already. Where? Oh, I rear some <laughs> at home. And then I caught fish. They say, what? <laughs> okay, so the fishes are out there in the world, in the sea, okay? for you to catch, all right? Every one of us is a fisher of men. That's what Jesus said when he called the disciples, right? I will make you fishers of men. So where do you catch the fish? In the sea, not in your garden, <laughs> in the pond, right? Not in the aquarium, all right? In your house. It's in the sea, okay? In the world out there. Okay, so they're crossing over. And when they had rode three or four miles and were near the center of the sea, the sea is very deep, right? That's why they need the boat. If they're without the boat, they will sink. Uh, okay, because it is impossible, all right, to walk on the sea. And at the almost at the center, so that means three or four, they are in the center, near the center. So three or four miles. So probably the whole distance would be eight miles to reach Capernaum or the village of comfort. So while they were in the center, they saw Jesus walking on the sea. Natural? <laughs> Is it possible? <laughs> Only Jesus, supernatural, can do it. Never see Jesus as natural again, ever. Okay, say, Lord, open my eyes. When you go to the Bible and open the pages of the Bible, you are opening a supernatural realm. You are going to admit, <laughs> because I see the one admit that, all right, into the supernatural realm. The Bible is not a storybook like any other storybook. It's, a, it's his story. It is a story of the one person, Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, 
Okay, don't see so many stories. Eh? Story of Elijah, Moses. Yeah. yeah, there are so many characters inside that. But it's all about this supernatural son of God, Jesus Christ, history, right? His story. Uh, supernatural. You like supernatural things? Go to the Bible. You will find everything there is supernatural. That's why when you don't understand this or don't have you know, deceived by the devil that the Bible is very hard to read, very hard to understand. You miss out the supernatural and you go and live a very normal life after receiving Jesus Christ. Because the devil don't want you to touch the Bible. The moment your eyes are open, you touch the Bible, not, not the physical one, where you dust off the dust <laughs> on the, the Bible that you keep there for many years. You touch the presence of God through his word, you cannot remain natural anymore. That's where the devil have to chow, <laughs> have to run. Okay? Because he, he already defeated by Jesus, defeated by all the, his apostles, all his generals of so many years, and now up come Elsa, <laughs> another one, <laughs> who is going to go into the word of God and so, and then come out. You go in the word of God natural, you come out supernatural. Want to go magic? <laughs> Evelyn go, uh, Kate wants magic. Good. Inside your heart. She desires the supernatural. Right? Where to find the supernatural? In the word of God. In the Bible. In Jesus. He will reveal to you the supernatural realm. All right? So, Jesus was walking on the sea, okay? With their physical eyes, they saw something supernatural happen and approaching the boat. So he was coming to them. They were all in the boat. Jesus came walking on the sea and they were frightened. When you read the Old Testament, you got frightened or not? <laughs> Uh, or you just read, read, read and then fall asleep. <laughs> because this is God. When God does, when you see God as who he really is, right? Those of, uh, in, the, in the worship training, right? In the Old Testament, they're very frightened of God. In the today, <laughs> we're also not scared of God at all. Not that we need to be scared of God, but we need to understand who God is, and if not for his mercy and grace, we will all die. Because they die standing, right? Standing, sitting, or crawling, all die in the presence of a holy God. Yeah, they were frightened because this is not normal. This is supernatural because no one can walk on water. No human being can walk on water. But Jesus came walking on water to them. And Jesus said to them, I always love, when you read your Bible, remember, every time God said, Jesus said, God said, Jesus said, God said, Jesus said, pay attention, right? Because God is talking. <laughs> Right? He's not just any uh, storybook man, you know, talking. This is God talking. This is Jesus, the Son of God talking. The one who walked on water. The one who turned water into wine. The one who does miracles. Okay? The God above all gods. The one who created you even before you were born. Who knows all about you. When he wants to say something, give your full attention to what God say, to what Jesus say. Because if you do what he say, you will have the supernatural. Because God doesn't say anything natural. No need, right? We all know how to do the natural things, right? Climb into a boat, <laughs> brush teeth, take bath, okay? Go see doctor. <laughs> all very natural. But when God says something, Listen, right? The parable of the sower and the seed. 
we're not listening. We see God as normal. Close the book, God is also closed totally. <laughs> close the Bible, we forgot about God until next week, open back the Bible. Then God comes up. Then close back, close put back, you know, jack in the box. <laughs> God is a, one day jump up, next day jump back inside, or rather we close him inside. Uh -uh. Okay, remember, read the word of God and hear what he's saying to you personally. Okay, the guidance here by the church or the pastor is to guide you to understand to rightly divide the word of God. But you also have the Holy Spirit, okay, who will guide you to hear the word of God properly. <clears throat> And Jesus said to them, what is it? Because they were very frightened, right? If you are in the boat <laughs> and you walk on the water in a dark, dark, <laughs> frightened or not? <laughs> yeah, yes, Elsa. Yeah, right? Because humanly impossible, naturally not possible. If you want this realm to live in this realm, the impossible realm to men, but not to God. Jesus said to them, I am he, be not afraid. I am he, be not afraid. So what made them afraid is not uh, all the problems of life, <laughs> right? They had a boat, right, to carry them there. What made them afraid is when they encountered the supernatural power of God. When men encounter God supernaturally, whether it's their healing or divine provision or any area, you begin to fear God. This fear is not a scare that God will strike you dead. Yes, in the past, in, in the, if not for Jesus, in the old covenant, yes. But today we are so blessed in the new covenant, he won't strike you dead. But the, this so-called this grace has been taken for granted. Yeah? And today, God's going to raise up his church, no more in the place of taking everything for granted, but moving forth in the supernatural, right? Power of God. Getting into the sea to take and snatch lives from the hands of Satan into the kingdom of God. And who are these people who dare to do that? Those who know who he is. Every one of you here. I am he. What is Jesus saying to the Jews? They know what that means. I am he. The word I am. I Very am. Enough. Delicious day, chicken. I am is the name of God. Jesus is saying that he is the I am. And when did they hear I am? God said to Moses in Exodus when God had humbled Moses and it was time for him to go and deliver the children of Israel from Egypt. And Moses said, who do I say have sent me? You see, he's so smart. <laughs> Moses, he doesn't want to do this thing, you know, which is to get the children for about 1.5 million of the Jews, all right, Israelites, from the hands of the cruel Pharaoh in his own ability. He knows that. Only if God sent him and he will be all right and the whole mission will be accomplished and successful. So God said to Moses, remember, God said to Moses, <laughs> have you ever written down anything that God said to you? Go there. Go to that place in where you know God promised you. All right, just now we've been going to say a word maybe. There's no maybe in God's word. 
in God, between God and you. There is no maybe. Maybe God will, is it Jesus? No, right? Just to let everyone know and uh, you know, be sure what, what you have in your heart that Jesus, Jesus is your, is everything, is, is your, the way, the truth, the life in your life is for sure, is certain, okay? In Christ, in God, in the Bible, there is no doubt about it, all right? Maybe it will happen, maybe not. If you believe, it will happen. If you believe Jesus will take you through victoriously, it will happen. When you believe the word of God or God, Jesus say, by your stripes and healed, that will happen. When you believe God's word that say, the generous person souls generously, reap generously, that will happen. When you say, whatever the word of God say, all our response is just believe. And it will happen accordingly because our God is not normal, natural person. So God said to Moses, I am who I am and what I am and I will be what I will be. And he said, we have put God to shrink him into what we think he is. <laughs> will he be shrunk by human mind and limited by human mind? Not in the days of Moses and not today, just before his glorious coming. You think God will let us, let man shrink him? If we don't want to do, to be part of what he's doing, he will just find another person to do it. Because God is still God. We are privileged. All right? It's not to be, are not doing God a favor. <laughs> You know, well, God, you need help. Uh. <laughs> so we come and help you, uh, you know, to, to save souls. You need money. Uh. Okay, we come, we try and offer to help you. Oh, uh, yeah. If that is my God, I also don't want, right? I want and serve a God who doesn't need my help. But he is helping us. Helping us fulfill our purpose. Helping us to be blessed helping us to see the truth, to see what he has done for us. In everything he asks us to do, it is not to we help him. Otherwise, we really see a very small God. We are self-sufficient. Ah, he is self-sufficient, not us. We need him, not he need us. And he put us together. It's our pledge to serve Almighty God, the one who doesn't need anything from us. Scary, huh? <laughs> because we think he need, right? He need our money. No, our tithing and offering is for you, for us to be blessed beyond measure. I am who I am. And in the Old Testament, right, he revealed who he is. Jehovah. God Almighty, the Lord. Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Sikinu. Oh, the wonderful God. Jehovah Jireh. To the Jews, they cannot even, it's so holy. Sekunu, God, the righteous one, the holy one. They cannot allow to pronounce that word. Today, God is so precious already through Christ. We can call him anything. <laughs> and still no fire come down from heaven and consume us. <laughs> we can even talk back to God, you know, angry with him. And then, oh, still no judgment. Because all that we deserve, all for our bad behavior and irrespect, disrespect of God. Jesus absorbed it on the cross. God punished him. It's like Jesus doing all those nonsense that we sometimes do. <laughs> and then God punished him for it. That's why we all go scot-free. But to the Jews, 
that they are very special to God, even though they, you know, they re rejected the Messiah, right? The new generation, the God still, still faithful to them because of God's covenant to Abraham. Promise. God is a God of covenant. So that's why it's very important that you have personally what God promised you as well. All right? If, and you don't get that if you don't read the word of God yourself. In my life, in every man, woman of God's life, okay, what God does with his children, with his servants, is that he speaks to us. Yeah, you can see it all through the Bible. And he don't speak to you through <laughs> to what? <laughs> to another book or whatever. He speak to you direct from God's word. All right? Don't need to name all these uh, spirits because of all that. They had the direct calling of God, the direct promises of God, whether in visions, dreams, but mainly from the word of God. Because why? What God says, he will do. What God says, he will do. What God says, he will do. Yeah. Let God speak to you. So God said to Moses, again, you need to see that. I am who I am. Don't diminish me and make me into a radio. <laughs> oh, you know, on the cupboard, whatever. I am who I am. One day, all eyes, all knees will bow down. It's the time is getting even nearer. All right. In natural time, it's 6,000 years. God's time is only six days. I am who I am, what I am. It's good. He's holy also. He's powerful. The next time you talk to God, don't think he's just friend. <laughs> Yeah, there's a place of friend, but emphasize all throughout the Bible that God is your friend. The only one that, you know, that part is God said he is whose friend? Abraham and Moses. <laughs> the rest of human beings need to respect God as who God is. Not that he's, you know, he won't talk to you and all that. Okay, but... Because if we don't see God is who he is, we will miss out on the supernatural. Right? Why God called Abraham Moses his friend? Right? They sought him. They talked to him. He talks to them. Until a place that they became my friend. If you hardly talk to God, <laughs> he hardly talks to you. Actually, he wants to. Right? So all this is about bringing you to him. All right, the fivefold ministry, the pastors, the leaders, teachers are to equip the church, the people of God, to bring them not to themselves. All right, you appreciate your pastors, leaders, good, but to bring you to Him, your God, become your personal God, that you know Him the way your pastor knows Him, even much more. That's where. He wants you to be. That's what Jesus longed for, right? Moses was willing to go face to face with God. The children of Israel say, you go, you go. <laughs> and then you tell us what he said. What? Yeah. Was it not for everyone? No, in the beginning it was for everyone, but they didn't want to hear God. Yeah. God's blessing to Abraham, he always there to talk to God. God talked to him the difference but we still inherit everything by virtue of God promise to Abraham so you will say you shall say this to the Israelites when you are God's prophet priest king you know messenger everyone is if you take up if you recognize who your God is and say yes Lord I will speak what you tell me to speak then you will hear God you say this to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. Who is that I am? The powerful God. The God who wants to bless, who wants to heal. Okay? 
I am. It's not, I am your servant. <laughs> I am your uh, solution <laughs> when you've got problem. He still is, you know. How good is God? Sometimes if we understand this, you know, if God didn't change our heart to be gracious, we will also think, what? <laughs> this God is so powerful, you know. How can we treat him like this? That's under, that's the lawful heart. Right? And God is so good. No one can even, that's why we are all not God. His compassion, His grace is incomparable to ours. Really, we cannot match the way He loved you, the way He loved me, the way He loved sinners. I am has sent me to you. I'm your healer, I'm your provider. By faith, I mean, and he is, I am means what? Hebrews say this also. That's where we'll be learning in, on Sunday, the faith series, from faith to faith, right? Hebrews 11, it by faith, he not was translated, not to see death, and was not found because God did translate him for before his translation, he has been testified to that he had pleased God well. How to please God? Yes, we know, we learn under grace that we are already pleasing to God. That is at a point of salvation and forever because of Jesus Christ, because you receive Jesus. But there's, you know, it's like you give birth to a child, right? The child as a baby, just born, didn't do anything right or wrong, whichever, but the parent feel very happy and very pleased already because the child, the baby was born. Okay, after the baby grow up, grow up, grow up, ready? <laughs> Forever, you will be the apple of your mother's heart or daddy's heart. But you will do the, the child, if very disobedient, very naughty, will not be able to please the mother and father all the time, right? <laughs> Just make them angry, make the parents angry. This is what it means, okay? Forever, because you are born again in Christ, you are pleasing to God, all right? But there are things that we do that or not do that may not be pleasing. So as we grow up, we can choose. We make decisions to choose to please him, to choose to honor him and to love him because he first loved us. Understand now this pleasing? All right. So, and it says apart from faith, it is impossible to please him well. So after born again already, which is by grace to faith, then we are to continue to walk by faith, which is through his word. Not seeing him, not going by five senses, what I see, but going by what his word says, right? What he says, which is always not in the five, not a, uh, uh, in accordance with our five senses, because he say you are healed, he say you are rich, <laughs> and then you say the bank account, oh, fifty dollar me, <laughs> left two digit. But he says you are rich, I will provide for you. Okay, Elsa, right? <laughs> Don't go to toilet. Uh, God said to you, <laughs> go to toilet. All right. It says if you decide you want to come for Holy Spirit power feast, then He will provide. Yeah, just so. Okay, trust Him. Yeah, so this is faith, okay? The, the journey to please God is a walk of faith. Fellowship with him, talk to him, let him talk to you his word, and then act upon his word, All right? Some of you have already started this journey, most of you, okay? Putting faith into action, believing God first, what he said. Believing God means believing what God said. Okay, it's not believing a tree, right? This living God, he already revealed to us in his word everything that they can please him. Do you know <laughs> what displeased God the most? You can see at the Garden of Eden. Ah, what? <laughs> 
then we won't do the thing that displeases him, right? <laughs> okay, I'm not talking about law and grace, okay? Just, you understand now, a father, a child, we want to please the father, all right? We are all already pleased because of, he's pleased with us because we are born from him in Christ. How do we continue to please him? What's the thing that we don't want to displease him? <laughs> he still won't punish you, all right? Anyone? Do God's will to please him. <laughs> okay, what does that mean? In one word, obedience. Obey. Yes. Obedience, all right? Out of new covenant, out of his love for us, okay? If you think, oh, grace means no need to obey anything. No, there's no such thing in the Bible, all right? Look at the new covenant, read the Bible, read the false letters and all that. Yeah, we still have obedience. There are still things for us to do, right? And it's up to us to obey. Even in the new covenant, right? Paul even talks about the law, right? One of the promises still there is obey your parents because it comes with a promise that obedience, all right, of long life. Okay, but qualify, right, in the Lord. Okay, there are certain things where uh, if they say you cannot receive the Lord, then that one we cannot obey. All right, other things we still obey. All right, so obedience, all right, when God said, this is it, this is my way, then you just do it. How pleasing, you know, God don't have to, you know, struggle with you. <laughs> Imagine the child, you're, you're a mother, your father, and then you tell your child, eat this, and then the child say no, and then you have to waste one hour or spend one hour talking to her or him and say, eat this, do this. There's nothing that God asks us to do that will harm us, right? We understand that he is God, he's become our father, he loves us, he will never ask you to do something that will harm you. But everything he does and asks us to do is to bless us. His way, right? He knows more. Yeah? Your mother knows more than you when you were a baby. <laughs> Growing, okay? But that God who knows more. So the problem with disobedience and rebellion, sin of disobedience, right? Because we all know Adam sin, he disobeyed God. Just one word. He disobeyed. He didn't kill anyone. He just disobeyed a very simple instruction from God. That is, don't eat the fruit of the tree or from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. He didn't kill Eve. <laughs> he didn't commit, but he didn't do anything else that today we'll say, oh, very terrible. He just disobeyed, didn't obey a simple instruction from God. And that's when sin came in. Yeah. But today, because of Jesus Christ, God gave us a new spirit, a new heart, a choice, a will again, whether we want to obey, but we can obey from the new spirit man inside you that's born again. We can choose to do the will of God, like Robert said. That means actually obey, all right? Not obey to be under the law, all right? To be blessed, to be healed, because Jesus already healed us. Yeah. That there are, uh, there's a, 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 it just come to me, right? There was a question that Janice asked, right? Probably answer it here tomorrow, so we'll be there. About asking God, you know, and uh, what is meditating the word of God and what is asking God. Because of God's grace, the goodness of God to not count your sins to us, all right? He has already given us many, many things in Christ, all the blessings. And for us to have those is just to meditate and thank the Lord for it, declare it, act upon it if there's a need to, and receive it by faith. Asking is asking for things that you don't have, right? <laughs> you ask for something you have, you, you already got, uh, uh, what, what do you have? <laughs> you don't ask again for what you already have. You normally ask for something you don't have. 
whether big or small is not the issue. Okay, it's not about asking big, that is ask. It's asking is what you don't have. So all the blessings, inheritance, you need to know what it is first. So you don't ask God for healing. Because that's already, you have it in Christ. So you meditate the word of God that by his stripes, I was healed, or I'm healed, and you declare it and you act upon it. Okay? We don't ask God for money, actually. Yeah, because Corinthians says that what? You have been made rich in Christ. And how all the, the blessing of Abraham is to come and all this is by being a farmer to sow, to tithe and to sow. And plant, as you plant, then your resources will be multiplied to you. So this is you need to meditate. So what do we ask for? You can ask for a husband. <laughs> okay? Because that is up to each individual. You want a husband or not? If you don't want it, God won't give you. <laughs> you want a wife or not? Okay? So these are the things that are not stated there. Okay? But God is good. If you don't ask for something that is bad or what, then he will give it to you, but you need to ask. Okay, the things that he already given to us in Christ, you need to meditate because they are already yours through Christ's work. Okay, clear, Janice? <laughs> it's sometimes very difficult to answer in WhatsApp. It's easier, you know, if I just uh, take a few minutes, but it was not planned here. But, you know, Holy Spirit knows when to answer some of your questions <laughs> at which time. So anyway, where are we now? Okay, so he had please. Uh, to please him is to believe that he, when we come to God, you want to please him, right? Believe that he is. Just now, I am. So he exists. Okay? So don't come to God as if he's some <laughs> two plus two equals four, that kind of thing, you know, formula, formula one. Okay? He is God. He exists. He is real. He can hear. He knows everything about us. <laughs> okay. He knows about your medical report, report, record. He knows about your bank account. He knows he is God. He's omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent. The all powerful, all knowing God. Okay. And when we come to Him, that's how we come to Him. Not, hey, God. <laughs> yeah, you can also, you know, but. Not like that, all right? So, because you don't expect anything from God like that, right? When we see God as who he really is, creator, blesser, good, powerful, has the ability to make good. He is I am, I exist. And then you believe he is I am. He exists, he's Jehovah, he's healer. He becomes a rewarder. See, you acknowledge him as who he is and all he wants to do is what? Reward you. Pay your salary. <laughs> you know, in this world, we have this word, bode. <laughs> okay. Curry favor, the boss. The boss are, you know, but it's not about curry favor. Here is really acknowledging him as boss. <laughs> the one who is in charge of our life. When you acknowledge him as boss, which is actually the meaning of the word Lord or master, okay, he becomes Lord to you. When you acknowledge him as healer, he becomes healing to you. That's what he said. He reward you. When you come to him with your tithes and offering, that you are acknowledging him as your provider, correct? When you bring your tithes to him, you're acknowledging that he's the one who supplies all your needs, all your finances. Then he becomes your supplier to you. He becomes a rewarder. That's a young literal translation, beautiful translation also, right? That's what he becomes. He said, I am, I become this to whoever you think I am. If you think you come to God thinking he's just like that, <laughs> that's why nothing happens in your life. No miracle happens but you acknowledge him as who he is, right? You come with faith. This is God. You are my supplier. That's how, yeah, that is a, I show it through my tithes and offerings. 
that I acknowledge you as my supplier, he becomes my supplier. This is what it means, I am. Okay, so when Jesus, John 6, go back to the, the miracle at the sea. They were willing then to receive him. You see, he, Jesus told them, I am, I am. He's God. Okay. And then the part is to the response of the people, the disciples, just like us, right? Hebrews 11, right? Our part now, do you want to receive, believe him as he is, receive him as he is? Then they said they were willing. That means they were at first very scared to let him come into the boat, so right? <laughs> Who is he? Only when he said, I am he. Do not be afraid. See, you need to hear God telling you this. You can hear it in a sermon, you can hear it anywhere. It is from his word. I, I am. I am your provider, Elsa. I am your God. I am your healer, Magdalene. I am. They are willing to receive him. So the part, same as when we receive Jesus, right? You hear he is God. He's the son of God, right? He died for you. And on our part, it's just, I am willing to receive. He won't force himself into anyone. When we say, yes, Lord, I want you to come into the boat, wherever you are. Whether it's, it's first, it's the boat that can represent your life. I spoke of it before. Can represent your life, can represent your business, your work, all right, your family. But today, this verse, Holy Spirit spoke to me very, very clearly and a bit different. I will go on. <clears throat> so they welcome Jesus into the boat. Welcome, right? Just like uh, Xiao Ling, right? Is it two weeks ago? She willingly received Jesus Christ into her life, her boat, right? Her life. And what happened? Immediately, the boat came to the land to which they were going. Okay, so there were another three and four miles to Capernaum in the natural. But the moment Jesus went into their boat, there was a miracle that happened. That boat immediately reached the shore of Capernaum. That was about three, three, three to four miles, right? They were in the center of the sea. They were rowing hard. And now they don't have to roll so hard to reach there. Okay, Siu Xiaoling, right? When Jesus came into your, comes into your life, you don't have to struggle like before anymore, right? Before he came into your boat, into your life, you were struggling. They were rowing very hard on this journey to go for their comfort, for their blessings. Very, very hard. Okay, but after Jesus came in, the boat reached there. Now, that is a miracle, but we need to understand it, okay, both from the spirit and then in the physical, okay? So when Jesus came into our life, he came first our spirit, okay? We are spirit, soul, and body, three-part being, tripartite man, okay? So when you receive Jesus, he came into your spirit, and in your spirit, you already arrived at the destination, okay? Which means, right, why we all believe or we all believe that the moment I receive Jesus, I'm going to heaven. You know, check go, right? <laughs> You're all still here, right? <laughs> okay, right? But because God words, God's words say he will give you eternal life. If you ever believe in God, all right? Receive Jesus, will not perish, but have eternal life. And from the word says our final destination after death on this earth will be the heaven, the place that God has prepared for us. So you already reached there. What? Which part of you reached there? Your spirit. That's why we are seated in heavenly places. 
Okay, your spirit is there, waiting for your body only. Not yet go. <laughs> okay, so at the rapture, our body will go. Right, Jesus come and give us a new body. Okay, so what happens? There's another part that is the soul. Okay, so everything that is in the spirit already arrived. That's why you have already been made righteous. You have, you know, that is the, the destination that it is finished. What Jesus did on the cross is to finish all the spiritual in the spirit, to be born again, to be made holy in the spirit, not in the body. Not okay in the spirit first, okay, because it's about our life, right? The spirit is the one that will never die, okay, it will not annihilate, right? Once you are born, you have a spirit, that spirit is an eternal spirit, either one day live with God or in heaven or in hell. So, your spirit is born again. The Bible tells us very clearly what is involved in that born again in your spirit. You have been made holy. 1 Corinthians 1.30 In him, we have been made righteous. We have been made sanctified, holy. We have been have redemption. Okay? We have been made wisdom. What is that? It's in your spirit. Okay? Not in your body. Not in your mind or in your soul area, which is the, the, the will, the mind, and the emotions. That's not saying your spirit is the one that's made holy. Because if your spirit is not given a new, you're not given a new spirit, not made holy, what will happen? Holy Spirit cannot dwell there. <laughs> right? In the Old Testament, right, that God had to contain his presence in the ark or in the tent, in the place called the Holy of Holies, separated by a thick curtain from the ceiling to the uh, floor because the presence of God is so powerful, no one can go in. Today, your spirit is like the place where the Holy Spirit dwells, where God's spirit dwells, and that place has to be made holy. Only he can come in and dwell inside you. Okay? So your spirit has, has to be made holy, and that can only be done by the power of God, Jesus Christ, paying the uh, dying as our sacrificial lamb at the cross. Anyone who receives him has been made holy and righteous. That's why religion is telling God, I have to do a lot of things to become more holy. Okay, so that holiness is not your flesh holiness, not the body one. Okay, it is the spirit one. Okay, now how does this Holiness, sanctification, all right, flow from the from your spirit man that has been born again and made holy to affect your actions and your 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 things that you do. So we still have sinful acts from our body. Every sin is committed by the body. Okay. You do somebody's things is from your hand, right? <laughs> okay, so your eyes can see, your hands can see, all right. So these are called sinful actions, which are still there. That's why the Bible calls it the flesh, all right. Paul calls it the flesh, you're still in the flesh, but he also says if you are in Christ, you can. You are no more in the flesh. That means our spirit can take over, can rule over the sinful desires of the flesh because now your spirit has been made clean, has been washed because otherwise, you know, Jesus, well, behold the Lamb of God that take away the sin of the world. That is the imputation of sin. That is the nature of sin. Okay, I'm explaining for someone here as well as for everyone, all right, to be clear, okay? That seed that we came from Adam, we received the Adamic sinful nature, which is from the devil. Because Adam was born again of the devil when he disobeyed God, all right, and partook of the tree that he was not supposed to, of the fruit. So he, in a sense, he was born again, but born again to devil's nature. So first John 1.10, 
uh, sorry, 3, 9, all right, says what? But now you are in Christ. You are born of incorruptible seed. A different seed now. Now, this is not natural. Okay, so they even try to figure out how this can happen. Because this is supernatural. Only God can make it happen. You just believe by faith. You say, how can I, you know, I was born in sin. Then now I got no sin. Only God can do it. That's why you had the faith to believe that Jesus can save you. Save you means take you out from the bondage and slavery and the curse of sin. Okay, slavery means you cannot help it. You, are, you were born in sin. You were, you know, it just raised the, the, the blood, just the, the genes is just in your body to sin. It's exactly correct. But the only thing is that we cannot save ourselves from this sin. Only God, Jesus Christ, can do it. And it, he did it on the cross by taking the punishment for our sin. So now we can receive the new spirit, man, new heart, be what we call born again from a new seed. Because when you believe Jesus, you are born from him now. And Jesus is greater than Adam. Ah, all right. If you don't believe this, then we have another session. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Jesus is greater than Adam. He is God. He created Adam. So we were born from Adam. Now we are born. So we partake of the new seed of holiness, righteousness. We are made no more sin in the spirit. But we still have these five senses, this body to deal with. Okay? So in the spirit, you no longer, this spirit man, all right, born of God, no longer wants to kill, no longer wants to hate, no longer wants to tell lies. Okay? But it still do here and there because of this mind. <laughs> okay? So the barrier between the full manifestation of the spirit, the newborn again spirit, and the, the works of the flesh through your body is this mind in between spirit, soul, and body. If I have a chart, I will draw it to you now. Okay, so by, by right, the whatever is in the spirit, newborn again, spirit will flow to the body. But because there's a center soul there, <laughs> okay, that the mind, all right, that is still thinking, I'm still a sinner because you look into the word of God. To those who are born again, when Paul writes a letter to them, he writes to them as saints. But these are in the spirit. Okay? Corinthians, he tells them who they are in Christ. Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. So, da, da, da. All right? So, how do we overcome this flesh? Because of this mind. Not yet renewed. So, we are still thinking, I'm a horrible sinner. You were. Trust me. Every one of us were. Horrible sinners. <laughs> okay? But God in his grace, that's what you call grace, didn't punish us for our sin. And he punished Jesus for our sin so that we can go scot-free. This is grace. You either receive it, believe it. When you believe it, you will experience the goodness of God. But we still have this body to deal with. Remember? So the mind... It's not yet renewed. That's why Paul says in Romans 12, 1, I beg you, brethren, present your bodies as a present your body. Okay, so we have this body, all our uh, physical senses and our body to present it to God. Say, Lord, I give you my body. Okay, now as a living sacrifice, okay, then renew our minds. So to serve you. Lord, I give you my hands, I give you my feet, I give you my eyes, I give you this body. Take me, take me, right? Uh, Robert Lawson, take me to Cambodia. <laughs> okay, he has given God his feet, his hands, all right, his body. Instead of go to uh, uh, tech, uh, what, what is that place uh, in America, the most sinful city, <laughs> the gambling one. Um, Las Vegas. Las Vegas. Ah, Las Vegas. So he, he presents his body, not go to Las Vegas. <laughs> can also, right? Yeah, can still go there. But go to Cambodia to preach the gospel. So this is the part that Paul says, having been born again, all right, in your spirit, now you present your body that 
to God to serve him. And by the renewal of the mind, I beg you, renew your mind. Okay? Renew your mind that you may what? Know the perfect, the will of God so that you can do his will. No longer doing the enemy's will. Right? So when we sin, it's because this mind is still listening to the enemy, still listening to the devil. Say, do this, do that, do this, do that. But your spirit actually don't want to do anymore. Okay? So that's where, and God don't remember our sins anymore under the new covenant because all have been washed under the blood of Jesus. That's why in the new covenant in Hebrews 9 and 10, God says what? I put my laws in your heart. Say, we don't come to uh, God's law and say, all oh, God's law is bad. No, God's law is good. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt all that. It's good. But because in the past, all right, they, the people were not born again, the Jews, right? This had to be given to them to guide as a tutor, as a guide so that they don't sin. But because they are still in the body and not born again, they still do sin. That's why you have the, uh, the, the, the whole process of uh, sacrificial lamb, where to go to the priest and then to go into the holy place for the blessing is when the, the lamb is killed on their behalf. So even if they, are, if they sin, there is a sacrifice for their sin to cover their sin at that time. That was covering atonement. Today in Christ, it's not just covering it's a complete removal of sin. If you see the word forgiveness, all right, it means not guilty. Be not because we didn't sin or we sin, but because Jesus already paid the penalty of our sin and the law of double jeopardy, right? Once a crime is committed, right, you cannot punish twice the person. So God punished Jesus. That's why he's not punishing you or me for our sin anymore if you believe in him as your sin substitute and therefore God said I, when he see you whether Sarah, Michael, Venice, right, if you are in Christ he just see the robe that you are wearing and he says I don't remember you, your sins anymore but the, the will of God the way of God, the laws of God are now put where embedded into our spirit, our new spirit man that doesn't want to kill. Don't have to say thou shalt not kill. It's already put into us, okay? Into this spirit. Have no desire to kill. Have no desire to lie, to do all those evil anymore because it's born, you're born of God, okay? And this mind is the part that either flow when we meditate God's word of who you are in Christ, then it will not become that barrier for you to stop sinning. For under grace, right, sin has no power over you. But under law, yes, because the strength of sin is the law. Okay. <laughs> Some teaching there, all right, to help you understand, all right, that God doesn't see, doesn't, um, see you as a sinner anymore in Christ, but we still daily still do sins, do the acts of sin, but because of his grace, we can easily overcome, right? We rule and reign in life. We rule over the flesh by the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. Okay, you won't be able to understand in one session, <laughs> but hopefully you can catch a bit, all right? You need to listen <clears throat> again. That's why in the sermons, in the teachings, especially when it's teaching, you need to listen many times. Okay? <clears throat> Wait. <clears throat> they were willing to receive him into the boat and immediately the boat came to the land to which they were going. So where, when Jesus come into our life, spiritually, in the spirit, you already arrived. Because what, where do you want to go? You want to go to the place of comfort, blessing, heaven already here. <laughs> okay, what else? All the provision, all the healing that Jesus did, you have already arrived supernaturally in the spirit. 
you can access all these blessings already in the spirit. What is blocking? The unrenewed mind and the five senses. So the more you understand, the word of God will tell you how to overcome this. Okay, through meditation, confession on his word, of who you are listening to correct sermons that tell you who you are in Christ, who God is. So they were going, right? Okay. Isaiah 46. Okay. So that boat can be your life, you know. Think about this. Wrap your minds around it. This is serious business. Okay. This is a prophet, Isaiah, that time before Jesus come, prophesying. Take it to heart. Remember your history, talking to the Israelites, your long and rich history. I am God. I am God. The only God you have ever had or ever will have. Incomparable. Don't compare God to anything that the world offers. If you look at God and think that he is... Uh, he will just help you have a better job <laughs> and more money. Then there's someone else in the world who can offer you better job and more money. You understand? When you see God as really who he is, he cannot be compared. Cannot be compared to any man, any woman, any solution, anything that this world can offer. Incomparable. Because there is no other God. He is the only one who created this universe, created you and me. And we are so privileged to know him. Irreplaceable. Just think of it practically, how you replace God. <laughs> he is irreplaceable. They begin to see God. We will go to Him. That's why you will go to your Bible. Because He, he is the author of the Bible. He's the one the Holy Spirit wrote, inspired all these different men and women to write the word of God. Oh, amen. <laughs> right? But He's the author. Get to know the author of the Bible. He is irreplaceable. No book can replace the Bible, okay? <laughs> That's why I don't want to write books. No book can replace the Bible. He is God. And he already wrote down who he is in his word. Go read the Bible. Go meditate. The Holy Spirit will help you. <clears throat> From the very beginning, so this is who our God is. Okay, one of the characteristics of our God. From the very beginning, telling you what the ending will be. We see movie, right? <laughs> we want to go to the ending also, right? If, uh, if you don't go check the ending, sometimes we go to the end and then we get disappointed. <laughs> the hero died, <laughs> right? our God, right? He already know the beginning and the end. And he already tell us what's going to right at the beginning of our life, right at the beginning in Genesis, actually. He already tell, told what is going to happen, right? The seed of the woman, right? Will bruise Satan, the head. Okay? Jesus Christ will come. It's not that after that, Adam fall and then God had to sit down and think again. <laughs> what to do now? You know, Adam already said, now I take another 10, uh, 10 days or 10 years to come up with a plan. God is God. Okay, that's why he's all wisdom. He thinks very fast, faster than all of us. <laughs> he's smart, but he put that a bit of him, right? We were created in the image of God into our brains. And yet we... And the sin, we still cannot really see God, understand him. If you will look into his word with the Holy Spirit, that's why Jesus said, wait, you need the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, who, who was in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, 
all the books of the Bible, all the way until Revelation, is written by the Holy Spirit. He knows what he writes, right? If he is in you, you acknowledge him before you open the Bible, he won't tell you. Yes, Lilian, he will tell you. <laughs> He's the one who wrote the Bible. It's just, you know, when we, 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 we read something and we don't understand, we go to the author. What do you mean by this, right? You don't go to someone else who didn't write those words and then you say, what is it? I don't understand. You go to the author. The author knows what he's writing. Huh? Yeah, that's when he will reveal to you. He will open up the spiritual eyes to see the meaning of salvation, the meaning of who is your God, the meaning of I am. All right. He will speak to you what the ending will be. So that's why it's no surprise what's happening in the world today. Are you shocked? If you don't know the word of God, you'll be shocked. <laughs> but when you know God's word, what is going to happen and going to happen and going to happen and going to happen and the end result is the devil will be chained for 1,000 years in the year of millennium. Why are we scared? Huh? So, but it's, be careful, right? Because the devil will distort whatever information you get from the world. He give you a little bit, 50% here, 50% there. Get it straight, 100% from God. From the very beginning, telling you what the ending will be. Our ending, selling your future. Thank God for uh, Janice who invited you and you received Jesus. Your future is bright. It's good. It's already stated by God himself. Yeah, you will not have to struggle your whole life. You can, the next six miles <laughs> to the village of comfort, to your destiny, to the life of pleasure, right? God's life on this earth, your life will be blessed from this day onwards. It's, it's in the Bible. It's no secret, all right? But there are scriptures to that Bible verses, which is what God say for you to meditate and believe. Remember? The problem is the mind. The mind don't believe. You say, how can some minds like some mind believe very fast? They, they get it very fast. <laughs> some minds got too much blockage. They keep on fighting with God. <laughs> no la, cannot be la. I have to work by hard la. You know, la. Well, longer a bit la. Okay, but if you believe straight away, very fast. Okay. Ah, so what was I saying? No need to look for. Fortune teller, <laughs> no need to look for Bomo, <laughs> all right, to tell you your future, <laughs> right? God doesn't hide our future from us. Only the devil tried to hide the, your future in Christ from you by, you know, telling you Bible very hard to understand, <laughs> okay? So when you go into it, it's very clear, okay? From the beginning, telling you what the ending will, will be. All along, letting you in on what is going to happen. Even Jesus kept on, tell, kept on telling the disciples what's going to happen. Just that at that time, they don't understand. They cannot hear. Assuring you, I'm in this for the long haul. I'll do exactly what I set out to do. Are you hearing, people of God? God say he will do exactly what he set out to do. Don't even doubt. Right? Everything that he said, prophecy after prophecy after prophecy, all the events in the world, all the events in Israel, everything over a span of 6,000 years has already happened according to God's word. And it's not going to suddenly stop here. <laughs> okay? It says, I will do exactly what I set out to do. So that's for the world. What about for you? What about for us? Our personal life. Our life together as Beauty for Ashes Church Ministry Family. Calling that eagle Cyrus out of the east from a far country, the man I chose to help me. Jesus, I've said it and I will most certainly do it. 
That's why I keep telling you, the word, the word, the word of God. If you hear his word, then he will have something to do for you. <laughs> if you have no word, there's nothing he can do for you. Okay? He works through what he says. All right? I have said it and I will most certainly do it. If you hear what he said, you have got a very, very powerful thing going to happen to you according to what he said. No one can stop because he's the God incomparable, irreplaceable. This is our God, my God, and your God too. I said it, I'll most certainly do it. I planned it, it is as good as done. When Jesus said it's finished, it is finished. So you have the general will of God for whole humanity, for the world. What about the personal word of God for us as a church, for you as a person, as an individual? Have you heard anything? <laughs> okay. May I say, see, I, if you hear what he's saying, then he will do. Psalms 31, 19. Lord, how wonderful you are. The psalmist knows, which is King David, right? How wonderful you are. You have stored up so many good things for us. Do you know what is the good things that God has stored up for you? So that's where you ask the thing that is already yours. <laughs> okay? Then you plead with God, please give me, please give me. He said, I already given you. But you don't know because you didn't go into the store. <laughs> ah, to go and look what you have there in the spirit, in the word of God, the store. All right. The Bible store is where he tells us what he has, he has for us. All right. It's like a treasure chest. Remember, it's a treasure. Go and dig it. Yeah, it's not for everyone. Those who don't bother, right? Even if the, the big treasure come out, you're also not looking for it. You don't see the blessing, all that has been stored up through Christ for his children. Those who will go and dig into the, look into the treasure chest. It's been heaped up, spilling over with cursing. No blessing, right? In Christ, there's so many blessings, right? If you were to name one, you name and then still don't believe 100%. <laughs> okay, go to the place in your meditation, confession, reading the word of God, searching into the treasure, your store, the Bible. Find out what is in the treasure, not just believe every single pastor or what you know, they preach good. All pastors, I believe, are good. Uh -huh. Okay, but one week once you listen, and then that's it. Okay, go to God direct, okay? Like a treasure chest, keep up spilling over with blessings for who? All for those who honor and worship you. Yeah, I believe you all here. Honor was honor, respect. Respect, you don't respect someone who is just same level with you. You respect someone, what? Higher, right? Yeah. Right, whether it's your parent or your uh, teacher or something, and this is God. We honor Him. We come here to honor God. We come here to worship Him, to give Him the glory, the, the praise that is due to Him. Those testimonies, when you testify, Evelyn, you are honoring God, yeah, and giving Him the due respect that belong to Him. You are testifying of how good He is. Okay, in our tithing, in our offering, we are honoring him, we are worshiping him. In our singing, we are worshiping him. Right? That means what? You worship someone is greater than you. So we're not singing song, right? We are honoring God, right? And God is pleased because that's faith, right? And what happens? He comes down, right? He blesses us. Everybody knows, but the, the way the, the, you must understand this is connected to grace. Okay, so first is to start with knowing that we come in through Jesus, right? Then the rest we grow. 
everybody knows that you can do this for those who turn and hide themselves to you. Now, Holy Spirit, when you gave me this word, because I appreciate the thought about this book. At that time, I didn't see it as, as uh, for this. <clears throat> and he just told me, and he, as I prepared this, I think Tuesday, he said, this boat is beauty for ashes. Okay, um, this can be your life, can be anything also. But specifically for us here today, God already spoke a word. Remember, just now he says, I will do exactly what I said I will do. And prophetic word, word from the Lord is God's word. Okay, but he said he will do. This book that we are all in, Beauty for Ashes, you can call it church, you can call it ministry, family, all right? Or even army, <laughs> because there are different ways that God sees us, right? But it is his church, basically, all right? His body. He gave a word when it started this ministry, when God told me to start it in 2021. Okay, and then 2022, he gave another word. Let's look at this word because it's all about what he says he will do. And he bring it instantly to the arrival. In the spirit, what he says here already done. Some already of you manifested some of it already in your life. But it's going to happen to the dot of what Jesus said. Because in my life, personally, it's all about what God speaks to me. It may take years, but whatever he spoke, his word came to pass. 1st January 2022, prophetic word of God for Beauty for Ashes ministry. Don't just take a word. I, I never take a word and leave it there until years. I write it down and I remember that word. I meditate, I speak it for, declare it. Because God, that's how we take God's word. If you're willing to receive him, we receive Jesus into the boat, means what? His word. His word is no sentimental thing. It's receiving his word into your life or into your ministry. So for me as your pastor, this is what God has spoken. All right? And I receive his word into this boat. For 022, he said this, I will increase the number of people and animals living on you and they will be fruitful and become numerous. I don't see in the natural and count whatever number of people we have here. I never see that. Because in, my, in the ministry in the past, the Lord has brought me through from one person. Right? God is incomparable. He's powerful, irreplaceable. He is Almighty God. Never look using your five fingers or ten fingers and count. <laughs> okay, God has different way of counting. Okay, in the spirit, right? He will increase. He do it, right? Not me, so I'm not stressed. Okay, I believe Him. I will increase and there will be, you will be fruitful. I will settle people on you as in the past and will make you prosper more than before. That's for beauty for anxious. All of us will prosper more than before. So if you have prospered before by him, all right, through him, you will prosper more. Yes, Lillian, more. <laughs> okay. His word, I'll teach you how to see his word. Okay. And how powerful is his word. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Then you will know. So whatever he said, when we believe, we're willing to receive Jesus, the word into our boat. This is what we say, Lord. Then what will happen? We will prosper according to his word. So that first you will know that I am God. I am the Lord. All right. Yes. 
the Lord keep raining down blessing upon blessing. He's not going to rain down curses or problems into your life. Tomorrow you will go about, you will go into that path of faith. Okay? So it's not that in this world there's no problem. Don't get me wrong. Okay? Otherwise, you will come up with another question. Pastor Stephanie said there's no more problem in this world. I didn't say that. Okay? But we will overcome by faith. All right? So, but what God wants to rain on you is blessing. Okay? Blessing after blessing. Okay? Blessing has not, nothing to do with problem. <laughs> okay? So, we will go in detail later. Uh, tomorrow. Prosperity will drench our land with a bountiful harvest. Okay? So, this is what God said. Am I going to make it happen? No. He's going to make it happen. For my part, I welcome this word into the book. That the, the disciples welcomed Jesus into the boat. And then they reached, when Jesus came into the boat, they received him. The boat reached its destination of the village of comfort. So whatever Jesus said, we welcome this word into the boat. For here is beauty for anxious. And he will make it happen. Isn't it? We read just now Isaiah 46 10. He will make it happen. All you, our part is to make sure we get into the boat. Okay, again, don't quote me wrong. I didn't say all other ministries, no good and no blessing. Okay, I never say that. Huh? <laughs> After you say, oh, only beauty for ashes. No, but this is what God spoke for beauty for ashes. Okay, and you put your here to be part here. The rest is for their pastor to hear what God say to them. Okay, but from here, God, that's what God said. This is what's going to happen. The bountiful harvest. Okay, both in souls, New souls saved as well as because harvest only taught two things seeding, all right, sowing and reaping. So you either you sow seed of God's word, people's lives, they receive Jesus. You see, so that the other one the Bible referred to is the seed of finances, right? You sow, you plant, and you will reap bountiful harvest, like the farmer. Okay, and last year, two zero. Two one on the 8th of May. You see, if I don't treasure God's word, I won't record all this and keep it in my book, in my Bible, or whatever. See, when God speaks to you, record it because you believe it. It's not yet happened, it's going to happen. Right? If your husband promised you, buy for you the biggest diamond ring, you record that or not. <laughs> you quickly record, right? Oh, on that one day, you promised me. Okay, I, I know John don't want, but I'm just giving an example. Okay, whatever, that's how you need to treasure also promises. See, on this earth, the devil has made it, you know, until we don't care what we say, we don't care what people say, we don't believe anything anymore. That's very sad because God works by his word. Right? When you learn to treasure word, Keep your word. Yeah, there's nothing wrong to tell Robert Law. Hey, Robert Law, you promise I better do. Because that will keep us in line, right? The way we see God. If we don't care what we say or what anybody say, we miss out on the most powerful thing. The word. The word. So if we're not going to get angry, the person didn't, right? We understand the, the, the weakness of human flesh. But what I'm saying is, remember words. That's why... What we say, okay, it's not by law we get angry or what if we don't do something, right? Until uh, it's not that also. Just help you to see that's how God works. Word by word, all right? Put that word when you read the Bible or when you hear a sermon or what is the words. If it is God's word, it's going to bring God's result. Write it down. This is God's word. When you have your own time with the Lord. Yeah, I know Lillian do that. Oh, God speak to me. <laughs> yes, that's how it is. You know, when I baptized in the Holy Spirit, that's what God spoke to me, right? In Ezekiel, he was giving me my destiny in the prophetic, which I don't really understand at that point of time when I was still a student in Ta College, right? But years and years later, everything fulfilled. God sent a different Ministers all around the world to come and lay and, and uh, impart the anointing and the blessing and the prophetic gifting and all to me. 
the calling was much earlier, but I wrote down what he said. Okay, so I want you to experience that for yourself. Amos 9, 13, that was in 8 of May, 2021. I have this habit from very long ago. I lost one diary, but outside, inside me, I still remember everything that God said. 8 of May, the prophetic word from God for Beauty for Ashes Ministry for 2021 started then. Amos 9, 13, 15. It was a very clear word that God spoke to me in this ministry. Indeed, yes, indeed, it won't be long. God's decree. Now, things are going to happen so fast. It's the beginning okay, of the ministry. I haven't met Lillian yet. I haven't met a lot of you yet. Okay, just a few of us at that time. Yeah, never mind, forget about the past. Things are going to happen so fast, our heads will swim. One thing fast on the heels of the other. We won't be able to keep up. Everything will be happening at once. And everywhere we look, blessings, blessings. Look here, look there. Blessings like wine pouring off the mountains and hills. This is what God promised me for this ministry. And I can see, and I take him at his word. I'm always very serious with God when it comes to his word. Don't play, play. <laughs> I've seen his word happen in so many years of my life. All I need is to hear his word properly. And that's it. He will do according to what he said. And he will do for you too. All right. So this was for Beauty for Ashes Ministry. Blessings everywhere. God will make everything right again. I love his word. Even already happened. I still love to go back to the word that he promised, that he said. And I see and each time, maybe new things or even the, 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 the promise having uh, fulfilled. It's so beautiful. The one who loves you, promise you. God made, will make everything right again. Okay? I lived 60 over years already. <laughs> yeah, a lot of things I, made, I did was wrong. <laughs> I'm not afraid. Do not ever be afraid of admitting wrong. <laughs> we all make mistakes. But Jesus make it all right. That's why Romans 8.28 says, He make all things turn out for our good to those who love Him and are called according to His purpose. If God has called you, you have a purpose in your life, you love Him, He loves you, everything will be made right. Okay, we reach the shore as well as it will manifest in the natural realm. For his children in beauty for ashes. All right, the ministry is not a foundation or a building. This ministry is made out of lives. Every one of your life is part of this spiritual building, this church, this body, Elisha, your inside, Michael, Venice, Janice, Evelyn, whole family, all of you are the body of Christ. This, this ministry, you're part of it. And God will make everything right for all of you in this ministry, in this body. Whatever that is not yet right, he will make it right. Yes, Elsa? <laughs> yes, we will rebuild our ruined cities, we will plant vineyards and drink good food. A, a good wine, <laughs> okay? Both in the spiritual and in the natural. In the spiritual, we just continue to sow and plant. In the, and then in the physical, it also happens. It will happen, okay? We work our gardens and eat fresh vegetables. Since then, I've been eating a lot of vegetables. <laughs> we have Daniel Pass or so. <laughs> All right, okay. God will plant us. Yeah, this God, and He will plant us on our own land. So Robert Lowe and his son physically has a, your own land, and you take over your neighbor's land also. 
okay? <laughs> because this is what God does. He's a big God. He expands, right? We'll never again be uprooted. I believe so. With all my heart, this is the last ministry before Jesus comes. At least for me and for all of us here. Of course, Jesus is coming very fast. Already, right? He will never again be uprooted from the land God has given us. God, our God, say so. Remember who is talking, huh? God, huh? Okay, Joan, your God. Robert Lowe, your God. Catherine, your God. Cheng Lan, Elsa, your God. Lillian, your God. Not just over the radio or anywhere. Your God is talking. Receive Jesus into our book. So, God has, has certainly, there's no uh, maybe or ha ha with God. Certainly, supernaturally and immediately, forthwith without delay, brought our book, Beauty for Ashes Ministry, forever grateful to God, forever grateful to Jesus. Every day I wake up and I say, God, you are so, 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 so good. Whatever I've gone through in my life, oh, forget about it. You are just super good. To the glorious destination. Blessing, blessing, village of comfort. Is it a glorious destination? <laughs> on this earth, right? The greater one of us in heaven. But on this earth, he has already purpose for us. The coming Holy Spirit, uh, power and come, a power feast, yeah, even more glorious. God is bringing us. He has purpose for us as a church. So there is an individual life, there is a church, and God is very interested in the church as well, because it's made up of individuals who are filled with His glory, right, with His blessing. As we come together, everyone having the same mind, same heart, experiencing God speaking to them, experiencing the blessing after blessing, the goodness of God and the transformation of character, more and more humble, more and more bearing the fruits of the Spirit, right? Not just miracle. Yeah, that's good, part of it, right? But the fullness of God. What happened? Fulfilling all his promises, not one promise. Oh, you want to say I'm greedy? Yes, I'm very greedy. <laughs> or the promises of God, all the promises of God. I'm not satisfied with one, two, three promises of God. Oh, I've heard him speak so much. The whole Bible is full of God's promises and goodness. I want all his promises to be fulfilled, not for me, for every one of us. Before we greet him in the sky, in the air. All fulfilling all his promises. This church, this ministry, is it possible? God can make it possible, that, you know, to even have missionary go out in such a short time of the ministry here. Only God can make it happen. Yes, that is all the promises that he has made to us. To every one of us, we are one body. Okay? We are one body, the church of Jesus Christ. That he, the world, for what? That the world may know. Remember last Sunday? Yeah, that was a, a word from the Holy Spirit when he said in David Goliath's story that why God gave David the victory, that the world, that the world may know. There is a God in Israel. Why is God blessing us? That the world may know there is a God here. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ, our Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And we all love him. The way Lillian loved him. The way John, no, no more sentimental, but firm. Right? This is our God. Our God that will never leave us. Our God that's irreplaceable. Our God that is so powerful. And yet at the same time, He is so good. He can crush us and kill us in one move of His finger. But He didn't. He killed Jesus on that cross. He punished His own Son so that all of us can experience His goodness in our lives. That we can have this promise of blessing after blessing. 
Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. Every day we wake up to blessing because someone became a curse in our place, our Savior. And when God bless us, we know it is Him. It is Him. Each time I hear a testimony of God's blessing, whether it's financial, health, healing, or any area of your life, I give glory, I give thanks to God. It's like, God, you are doing what you promised me that you will do here to every one of you. To you, it's a blessing from God. To me, it is God doing what he promised me. He never failed. He will never break his promise. Amen. This is that the world will see people out there you will be able to reach out to them without knowing what to say because your life is so blessed. When they look at your life, they will say, what is it in your life? I want something that you have, that peace, that joy, that blessing, supernatural. It's like you are already reached a place of your destination in Christ, heaven. This is where God wants to bring us to enjoy that the world, the life of pleasure and not pressure, that oh, there are Gentiles out there that were looking at the Jews. Today, they are unbelievers, souls that are lost. You heard from, is it Evelyn Go, right? The people who cannot sleep. Yeah. But you can be there and say, my God is supernatural. You want to know him? <laughs> And then you can sleep like a pig of any said one. <laughs> From being tormented by the evil spirit to being blessed by Holy Spirit, <laughs> God's Spirit. Yeah. This is uh, this year is March, and God is speaking like never before and doing things so fast in this ministry in every one of your life. This ministry is not a ministry if there's no people inside, right? You are part of that ministry, the body of Christ, yeah? God wants to bless your lives and he can do it. It is for us, remember? For us. We are not helping God. God is helping us. He chose each one of you. He handpicked you to be, have the privilege to honor him and be blessed by him so that the world outside can see our good supernatural God. In a time of chaos, where people are worried, we will be the light in the darkness. And who do we point to? Our God, Jesus Christ. Amen. I can see that. <laughs> Amen. Every one of us have the same heart, right? glorifying God. And he is not going to bypass you. He's going to bless us. Amen. Hallelujah. So be it. Amen. Whatever God say he will do is a big, big amen. I see uh, some of you have very nice stickers <laughs> in the WhatsApp group, right? Amen, amen. Wow, so nice. Amen this way, amen that way. Yes, amen to God's word. None of his word will fall to the ground. It will not return to God void, as in Isaiah 55. But it will accomplish that which he purposed. That means what he wants to happen will happen. And it's supernatural, as uh, what is a supernatural immediate arrival. We already arrived in the spirit. I already received what he said in the spirit on May the 8th. It's just happening now, manifesting into the natural. He brought Lillian in, Xiao Ling in, and every one of you, even Michael, God loves you. You're not here by accident. God has a purpose. He's fulfilling his word, his promise. Each one comes inside here, it's not by accident, but by divine appointment according to his word and his promise and i speak by the power of god and the authority of god 
Okay. All right, let's pray. Thank you, Lord. Shukuri bakashanda rabaka shukuri andabas. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Shikela makasukuri andara bakashanda. Kere bakashukuri andara bakasina. Thank you, Jesus. I wait for the day when we have a Holy Spirit power feast. And after the preaching of his word, we can just all stand up. And uh, even Elsa did us. <laughs> okay. To worship him. Because that's what is so filled my heart. Thanksgiving to God for his word for his blessings in our lives, for his goodness and his power demonstrated. Father, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you from the depths of our heart that your, you gave your word, you gave your promise to each one of us and to all of us as one body in this ministry. You gave us beauty for ashes. All our lives were like ashes before messed up, don't know where we are going here and there, trying to reach the other side. But Lord, by your goodness and your grace, Jesus, we came into our boat, we received you, and we were transported straight away in the spirit to the other side, to the place of comfort, to the village, to your resting place. And we are now in your presence, receiving your blessings upon blessings, Lord. The goodness and the grace of God in all our lives, transforming us from glory to glory. That the world outside may see that there is God here. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And before you come, Lord Jesus, Lord, we thank you. You will increase. You will bring many more lost souls into your kingdom, Lord, and use every one of us here, every one of your children here to be a soul winner and to be blessed financially above and beyond so that the world can see you, Jesus, you, our Lord, you, our living Savior, forevermore before you come. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Bless everyone here this morning with your word, that they may go forth carrying your word of faith in their hearts. Lord, knowing that you will never fail, that you are their personal God, and all that they have given you, you will give them much more because you are a God of abundance. Bless the work of their hands, everyone here. Bless their lives, they are coming in and they are going out. Bless every decision that they make with wisdom and Lord, that they don't have to have any worries in this life as you, Lord, take over their lives. And together, Lord, bless this ministry is so blessed because God, you are here. And Lord, we thank you for the increase of souls, the increase of finances and blessings, supernatural not only in Janice's life, in everyone's life. More and more, not less and less, more and more. We give you the glory, we give because we will prosper more. That's what you say, Lord. We will prosper more and more. How loved are we in the Father's eyes? Thank you, Jesus, that you continue to do what you have begun to do in Beauty for Ashes until everyone is that bright shining star in this world, before the morning star comes, already live in our hearts. Thank you, Lord, for choosing us. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. The prophecy already for Paul. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the word of God. Amen. <laughs>